Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Stockton University Physical Therapy Program Commitment to the Profession Ceremony, honoring the DPT class of 2021. I'm Tom Nolan, Jr., Associate Professor of Physical Therapy. Please welcome to the auditorium, the Stockton University class of 2021. Joining us for the ceremony this evening, our interim provost and vice president for academic affairs, Dr. Michelle McDonald. <laughs> Dean's School of Health Sciences, Dr. Peg Slusser. <laughs> Joining us via Zoom, the president of the New Jersey American Physical Therapy Association, Brian Mason. Professor of Music, Dr. Beverly Vaughn. <laughs> the Director of the Stockton Physical Therapy Program, Dr. Patricia McGinnis. <laughs> Stockton Physical Therapy Faculty, Dr. Leanne Gunther. Dr. Mary Lou Galantino. Dr. Alicia Mastrangelo. Dr. Rob Marcico. Dr. Lauren Del Rossi. Dr. Matt Roman. And Dr. Ali Alcurdi. Dr. McDonald. Thank you for inviting me to participate this evening, dear class of 2021. We had hoped, of course, to hold this ceremony in April, but life intervened. And what should have been an initiation as you entered your third year and the clinical portion of your graduate career is instead a recognition of your resilience as you pass just the halfway mark of the semester. Now, I know that your faculty and all of the staff that support them have done everything they can to create the academic experience that you envisioned when you first came to Stockton, but I also know that things by necessity are looking a little different nonetheless. Although if the video of some of you studying gait analysis while listening to Little Nas X, are any of them here today? Can you raise your hands? Yes. Are any, um, any example, the one that went viral on the university's uh, Facebook page on Halloween, is any indication this is a group that will learn to roll with the punches? Now, I'm a historian by training, uh, so I will confess that your curriculum is not one that I'm terribly familiar with, and so I took a little bit of time to look it up before I came here this evening. And it appears to me that you are entering a profession that studies range of motion, that identifies medical impairments, 
um, that helps people learn how to understand and manage their pain and does so in a comprehensive way. And by this, I mean that some of your classes are technical and clinical, gross anatomy, neuroscience, kinesiology, which I practiced saying more than once before I came this evening. <laughs> but others are social, right? Understanding how wellness contributes not only to an individual's freedom of movement, but also to community well-being. And that would be how I am most familiar with your discipline, as both my husband and my father are currently in PT. My husband is in PT to recapture his range of movement as much as possible so that he can continue to be the terror of the racquetball court, a role he has relished for decades. And we have, yeah, really for decades, it's, yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to his return to the racquetball court. He's a much kinder, gentler man when he has racquetball as, uh, as a means of expression and release. Uh, this is something that we've seen gradual uh, and incremental improvement over many months. For my father, the goals are much more modest. He just wants to be able to walk to his car, right? To walk through a grocery store, to visit my sister's house on his own. Now these are simple stories, but they share one common trait. This is the ability to choose, to choose how you spend your free time, to choose how you live your life, to choose where you go and to set your own schedule. Because in the end, the career that you are entering is so much more about improving mobility. It's about improving quality of life. It's about fostering independence, about making the path of each of your patients, whether it's a short path or a long path, a little bit easier. So good luck and thank you. I'm Dr. Peg Slusser, and I'm the Dean of the School of Health Sciences. Um, for many of you, I was faculty in the Bachelor of Science and Health Science program, so I've seen your smiling faces. Well, I have seen your smiling faces um, without masks <laughs> in my past, and I am so proud of you. Every time I see all of you, I am so proud of you. You inhabit that little space outside of the Dean's suite, and and I want to tell you what I've observed. This isn't in my speech. It's a good thing I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> but you, your conversations demonstrate a true um, learning, the ability to conceptualize, to analyze, and synthesize. Those are really high-level intellectual skills. You didn't know how to do them when you got to Stockton, probably, for most of you, it was memorizing for tests and you know, memorizing those three answers. You can't do that anymore. You, this is really complex and you have mastered it. I can tell when you talk to each other, you use your hands, you use your bodies, you, you, you really know what you're talking about. So I am delighted to be here and be part of this very important day for you. I want to give my greetings to both Dr. McDonald, both, all of them, Dr. McGinnis, your esteemed faculty, all of you, your friends, your families, and honored guests. I am so happy to be here, really. I planned on getting here a little earlier. Actually, I planned on being here on April 1st, as you did. That was our plan. You have a goal, that was the milestone. And then you know what happened, COVID. And so things changed. Things changed, but your goal didn't. And you should be proud of yourselves. You're still on your path. You've demonstrated an amazing level of adaptability, patience, trust. Trust in yourselves, trust in your faculty to help you along the way. And you've continued to navigate in this constantly evolving and changing path, but you're still on it. And today you're here at your white coat ceremony. Today you've reached an important touchstone in your path to becoming a physical therapist. Your white coat symbolizes 
the learning transition from classroom to clinic. And you're ready for it. It's a symbol. Um, it's a symbol of the immense honor that you will claim as a member of this profession and of the trust and respect you will receive every day in every unique therapist patient relationship that you enter. Making it fit and wearing it comfortably will require you to demonstrate professional accountability and respect for all the knowledge you've gained so far and to have a clear understanding and respect for how much you still have to learn. And above all, you have to have respect for your patients and your colleagues and yourself. My wish for each of you today is that you always feel very much at ease and comfortable in your white coat. And that every day you wear it, you make a positive difference in the lives of those you have the privilege to touch. Congratulations. Brian Mason is the president of the New Jersey APTA, American Physical Therapy Association. He's also the director of physical therapy at Central State Medical Center in Freehold. Uh, this is an honor to be, uh, speak to uh, the Stockton students and future colleagues. And I'm also thrilled that I can finally take a mask off today for a few minutes. Uh, it is a great honor to uh, wear the white coat and people have touched on it. What it really represents is uh, professionalism. Uh, and through your careers, that's gonna something that separates you from the pack. Uh, everyone on the stage up there today, I can guarantee is a high level professional and that's why they're successful. I wanna share with you uh, some recent Stockton grads and some who aren't so recent, but three of them did graduate from your program. Rick came to us as a uh, fully grown person. He was like 45, he was a second career. Uh, Rick uh, was interested in aquatics and sooner or later, somehow we happened to have amputees show up. Rick started a uh, scuba for soldiers program, got a grant from the wounded warriors. And as of today, the fund is still going. He, he and the dive team, and by the way, dive instructors are great people. They just gave up their time selflessly. We've graduated over 500 wounded warriors who are scuba certified. Our record is a triple amputee. So that's what a professional does. Emily came to us as a new grad. She was interested in pelvic health. She started our pelvic health program for women and now she's starting it for men. Uh, Emily is also a yogi instructor. During the pandemic, they called her Midnight Emily. She would show up at midnight and do re relaxation exercises with the critical care nurses. That's what a professional does. Marcus is working on his uh, OCS. He's a good therapist, he's a real good therapist. During the pandemic, we had to create units. They were called, some of them were called the units of the forgotten because the nurses were called out of retirement. They hadn't worked med surge in years. They were supposed to be clean units, but COVID ran through them. Uh, Marcus worked as a nursing assistant, 12 hours a day uh, for seven days a week. He did nebulizer treatments, he did the vitals. He was so valuable that the floors would fight over him. That's what a professional does. None of those people ever asked for anything in return. It was all about what's best for the patient. And th those are the people you're proud to have as colleagues. Uh, they are fantastic therapists. At our institution, uh, because we proned a lot of patients, we had therapists around the clock, making sure that the patient was not only prone properly, but their head was turned every two hours. Not too many therapists get to say, I worked at two, four and 6 a.m., but they did, they were there. And all our patients we've discharged from this hospital have done extremely well. They haven't had the secondary breakdowns that we've seen elsewhere. And a lot of it, I believe, was due to the physical therapy, respiratory therapy combination. They worked great. They were professionals. This is a great field. Uh, I have been doing it for a number of years and I couldn't be prouder to be a physical therapist. I wanna welcome you as a colleague and I want you to keep an eye on professionalism. You'll see a lot of it and you'll see some things you're not gonna like. Just remember that too. Because you wear a white coat, or because you have a license, doesn't mean you're a true professional. You have every opportunity to be a great professional. Follow up on it and do it. Look around in the clinics. 
see who the star is and you'll figure out real quick that they're a professional. Thanks again for your time today. Look forward to working with you and seeing you at conferences. And again, this is an absolutely wonderful profession. Uh, I couldn't be happier with my choice. And I think everyone on that stage I would say that this was possibly the best choice we ever made in our life. Thanks again, all. Thank you, Brian. Now it's time for you to put on your white coats. <laughs> yes. I'll be calling each of you down to the stage individually. When you come down, stand right in the middle. See where that little black box is in the middle? You'll stand right in front of that black box and you'll don your coat. Unfortunately, the faculty won't be able to help you because of COVID, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to get the coat on yourself and, uh, and then we'll have your pictures taken. So let's get started. From Marlton, get this mask off. Justin Aglavo. <laughs> Justin prefers to be called Jason, I've been told. Uh, he's a PT club member. He volunteered at the 2019 Special Olympics and currently works at Weissman Children's Hospital. From Millstone Township, Anthony Barquino. <laughs> Anthony is a member of the Physical Therapy Club. From Firenze, Italia, Gabriele Bendili. <laughs> Gabriele is a graduate assistant for Dr. Mastrangelo, and he's a Stockton employee and a member of the Physical Therapy Club. From Wayne, Peter Bennett. From Egg Harbor City, Caitlin Sitta. <laughs> Caitlin is a PT social media coordinator and a PT club member. From Eatontown, Christine Daly.
Christine. Christine is a physical therapy club member, a graduate assistant for Dr. Mastrangelo, and a lab assistant. From Tom's River, Anthony DeRosa. Anthony is a PT club member. He volunteered at the 2019 New Jersey Special Olympics. He's a rehab tech at Encompass Health Rehabilitation. From Ventnor, Carly Egri. Carly is a physical therapy club, community outreach and social media, and also a graduate assistant for Dr. Galantino. From Brick, Amanda L. Corey. Amanda is a physical therapy club member. <laughs> From Summers Point, Vanessa Francesco. Vanessa volunteered at the Atlantic City Marathon and she is a physical therapy club member. <laughs> From Hawthorne, Jake Grutenbohr. Jake is the Stockton Physical Therapy Club Secretary and Vice President of ODK Honor Society. <laughs> From Voorhees, Leo Horowitz. a physical therapy club member and he's a certified strength and conditioning specialist. <laughs> From Vineland, Gina Irazari. Gina is also a physical therapy club member, and she's a graduate assistant for Dr. Marcico. Bud Lake, 
Justin Maximo. <laughs> Justin is a physical therapy club member. From Mana Hawken, Chelsea Miller. <laughs> Chelsea is the Stockton PT Club Community Outreach Chairperson and also a member of the club. From Jackson, Mallory Murphy. <laughs> Mallory is a Stockton Physical Therapy Club event coordinator, and she is a lab assistant. from Egg Harbor Township, Earth Patel. Earth is a physical therapy club member. From Bergenfield, Kevin Pineda. <laughs> Kevin is a physical therapy club member. He volunteered at the AC Marathon and the 2019 New Jersey Special Olympics. From Lumberton, Mahogany Reevy. Mahogany is a PT club member. She's also a graduate assistant for Dr. McGinnis and Dr. Galantino. From Bridgewater, Brian Reed. Brian is a member of the Physical Therapy Club. From Tom's River, Jacob Rickett. Jacob volunteered at the Atlantic City Marathon and he's assistant event coordinator for Stockton Athletics, any PT club member. From Galloway, Lindsay Roof. Lindsay volunteered at the Atlantic City Marathon 
and she currently works at Weissman Children's Hospital and is a member of the Physical Therapy Club. From Paramus, Franklin Roque. Frank is a graduate assistant for Dr. Mastrangelo, a graduate student council delegate. He's the PT club's rules and regulation coordinator, a member of the PT club. He volunteered in Atlantic City Marathon and the 2019 Special Olympics. From Norristown, Pennsylvania, Jamie Lynn Roskus. Jamie is graduate assistant for Dr. Nolan, volunteer at Atlantic City Marathon, the 2019 New Jersey Special Olympics. She's an assistant to the president of the Physical Therapy Club. What? Oh, sorry about that. That's what was given to me. <laughs> I didn't think you were my GA. <laughs> Are you a GA? You're not, okay. Oh, you remember the PT club? Okay, there we go. Remember the PT club. <laughs> From Williamstown, John Stahl. John is a graduate assistant for Dr. Nolan. Uh, he did volunteer at the AC Marathon. Uh, he did volunteer at the 2019 New Jersey Special Olympics, and he's assistant to the president of the PT club, according to this. So. From Stone Harbor, Dorothy Stump. <laughs> Dorothy is a graduate assistant for Dr. Del Rossi. She's an anatomy teaching assistant, kinesiology graduate assistant, and a PT club member. <laughs> From Millstone, Cassidy Troy. Cassidy is the APTA New Jersey student liaison, and she's a delegate for graduate student council and a physical therapy club member. From Cherry Hill, Ryan Worley. Ryan volunteered at the Atlantic City Marathon and he's a physical therapy club member. Coop. Juliana is a Stockton PT Club treasurer, a graduate assistant for Dr. Gunther, and a lab assistant.
from Oakland, Natalie Zanetti. Natalie is the Physical Therapy Club president. She's the class of 2021 representative. She's a graduate assistant for Dr. McGinnis, a lab assistant. She volunteered at the Atlantic City Marathon and she's a PT club member. From Franklinville, Chris Zeck. Chris is a PT club member and a graduate assistant for Dr. Mastrangelo. Now Natalie Zanetti, the class representative, will come to the podium to lead the class in the oath to the profession. In the presence of my classmates, family, friends, and faculty gathered here today, I solemnly and willingly dedicate myself to providing the highest quality care and services. I solemnly pledge I will respect the rights and dignity of all individuals who seek service, my services or with whom I work, act in compassionate and a trustworthy manner in all aspects of my services, exercise sound found professional judgment while abiding by legal and ethical requirements, demonstrate integrity during interactions with everyone for the enhancement of patient care and the advancement of my profession, enhance my practice through lifelong acquisition and application of knowledge, skills, and professional behavior, participate in efforts to meet physical therapy and healthcare needs of local, national, and global communities. Thus, with this oath, I willingly accept the duties and responsibilities that embody the profession of physical therapy. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. Well, that brings us to the end of our ceremony. I'd like to thank the planning committee, Dr. Marcico and Dr. Galantino for helping out with this event. Especially like to thank Stockton ITS production services, Shannon Onks, Mark Jackson, Lisa Warnick, Peter Gallagher. <laughs> Diana Miko and Lisa Hunt for our photos. All the camera operators up in the booth, thank you. And John for disinfecting. And of course, Dr. Beverly Vaughn for her music accompaniment for the ceremony. Thank you. Thank you everyone at home for joining us today. Especially I'd like to give a shout out to Dr. Bess Catherines and Dr. Elaine Bukowski, two retired faculty members who are joining us by Zoom today. So thanks everyone and have a great rest of the year. Thank you.